decades ago, an ingenious new tool was developed, which has allowed us to unlock all sorts of personal information. It's called genetic ancestry testing. And today, with just a little saliva, you can take the fast track to unlocking your family's past. Well, DNA ancestry tests have become so popular that more than 26 million people have wow. used them, you know, to learn about their health and their heritage. But sometimes people find out information that's way beyond what they bargained for. Well, that's exactly what happened to our next guest. Please welcome Julia to the show. Julia. <laughs> Julia, before we get started, I just want to mention that you are related to someone who is on the show. Not me. And, Someone else. <laughs> and it ain't me. Right. <laughs> so we'll talk about that a little later. So you recently submitted a DNA sample, and what made you do that to begin with? Well, I just did it for fun. My brother-in-law had taken a test, and he um, discovered some things about his ancestry back in Greece that gave a little more detail to his family mm -hmm. life. And he also discovered cousins across the country. Okay. So it seemed my family's really small, and I thought that would be fun. So tell me what happened when you got your results back. I was raised Ashkenazi Jew, Eastern European Jew, 100%, no doubt about it. But this pie chart showed that I was less than half Eastern European Jewish. Hmm. And the rest was a mix of East English, French, Irish, German, a little bit Asian. And I thought there was something wrong with the test. Right. That's what people always say. <laughs> it's not me. It's got to be the test, the test, right? right? All right. Exactly. So, all right. So you got that. Then what did you do next? Um, the next screen was to turn on Find My DNA Relatives, which I was interested in doing. Mm -hmm. So I turned that on. And then I got a bigger surprise because it showed that I had, at the time, 15 half brothers and sisters. Wow, 15. 15? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Right. Did you still think it was wrong? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this is absolutely wrong. There's no way that could be right. So that night I Googled all of them really deeply. <laughs> and on one of my half siblings' uh, social media feed, there was a clip from the Today Show. There were about seven people who explained that they had come from the same. Uh, donor, sperm donor, mm -hmm. and one of the people was described as the son who had grown up with the bio dad, and I thought, I don't know that guy, and he's not my brother, but mm -hmm. I must be one of these people oh, who's okay. the yeah. product of the artificial insemination. Okay. So then the next thing I would think is you talk to your mother, right? Right. So <laughs> did you go to your mom? I called her up right away. Okay. And I uh -huh. said, um, I got these results. And I'm connected to these half siblings. I'm going to be very careful, but I would like to find out more. Do you know what happened? She said, I never thought I'd have to tell you this. You've hmm. got to come over right away. But I didn't want to go. You it's, didn't want to yeah, go. Because you're like, you're, it's like you want to know, but you don't want to exactly. know, right? Exactly. You go to your mom's. Yes. What? I mean, she must have been a wreck. Well, the interesting thing that I learned is that when people went through this um, fertility treatment in the 60s, it was totally taboo and no one talked about it. And she really had put it out of her mind so that she would never reveal this to us. So when I came to her and I said, I think this is what happened, she was very matter of fact about it. And she wow. just told me what happened. Talk about mm -hmm. holding a secret. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So obviously <sighs> you have a different dad than you thought you had. Yes. So did that change the way you think or felt about your dad, the guy that you know of as your dad? It did. Um, really? In, but in a really mm. positive way for oh, me, good. Okay. my father died in 1989, so he was already gone. But okay. my mother did okay. tell me that it was his idea to go to the clinic, and that made me feel really, really grateful to him mm. because he never once let on one, not one inkling that we were not his wow. biological children. I always associated myself with him. I have two brothers. I'm very close to them. But they were kind of a unit. They look alike, and I look different. So I always thought I had my father's traits, mm. brown mm -hmm. features, long legs. And, mm -hmm. I, and even with my own children, I saw my father mm. in them. What did you learn with, about your relationships with these two brothers that you grew up with? Well, um, when you find out, your perspective changes completely. And I almost had like a vision in my mind of the two of them kind of moving a little bit up. Uh, up and over and making room for these new siblings. But really? I think the two of them have become much closer because they also took DNA tests mm -hmm. and they okay. discovered that they are full brothers with a different donor father than right. mine. So, you know, there's a lot of shock going on mm -hmm. here, right? You're, yeah. You've got this great relationship with your dad. Your dad passes away. Now you find out that he's not your dad, but you've always really identified with him. Something else happened that took this to 
the next level. Right. As well, if as if there could be <laughs> another wow. level. Yeah, there's a, there's a much higher level. Um, <laughs> the same day that I got the results, uh, one of my half siblings from this list reached out to me and said, if you're confused by these results and you'd like to know more, let me know. So I wrote him back right away mm. and I said, I am confused and I would like to know more. And ultimately it came, uh, he sent me a much longer email that explained that I was one of now almost 30 half siblings. Oh my God. 30. 30? So you went from like two to like, oh, I was at 30 when or more. When she first sat down, she <laughs> said, oh, I, had a, I have a small family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you got 30 yeah. siblings. Wow. When we come back, we're going to meet some of Julia's half siblings and hear more about what happens when we unlock the deep, dark secrets of our past. Don't go away. You don't want to miss this. Next, what happens when you find out your father isn't really your father? It was interesting to me to think about that there was another um, person in my life who I didn't know that had a big impact on who I was. And later, 30 half-siblings and counting. Where will this twisted tale of family secrets end? My father was not my father. Right inside our doctor and diva home. recently took a DNA test to learn more about where she was from. And shockingly, she found out she kind of had a new father <laughs> and over 30 half-siblings. What a shock. Julia, what was it like gaining so many new family members, like, all at once? Bang, like that. Well, um, it was a shock mm. um, and totally disorienting. But at the same time, it was very exciting. Yeah. Um, and I really mm. wanted to meet them and know more about them. I felt like they could probably help me figure out more about my real self in a way. Wow. But I gotta guess the first thing you wanna know is all about your actual biological dad. So what'd you find out about him? Um, I actually didn't find out anything myself, but this group of siblings that I entered into had already done a lot of research and knew really? a great deal about him. Okay. So. Well, to help us shed some light on who Julia's biological father is, we have one of her half siblings here. Please welcome to the show, Tim. All right. Okay. So Hi, we're going to square, square this up. So you, uh, you have a mom. You don't have the same mom, but you right. have the same dad, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so the same sperm don't argue. We i got to keep track. We had different fathers right. and the same bio dad. Oh, right. same, same bio dad. Donor. How did you find out yeah. all about this whole bio dad, you know, donor dad stuff? Yeah, I, I didn't think about it at all my whole life. I had uh, two older brothers, a wonderful family, great mom and dad who raised us. And in uh, 2002, my father passed away. And a few years after that, one night, my mom said, I've got to talk to you, mm. kind of with that heavy tone. And I sat down and she said, you and your brothers have different fathers. I was uh, thrilled by what my mom said, really. It made a lot of sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. My brothers and I have very different coloring. I think they had decided that they wanted to make sure that my father was a father figure. Mm -hmm. that there was no challenge to that right? right he was a wonderful man and i have so much respect for what they went through Did you have almost over 30 siblings that was the more shocking part what my mom told me was okay you know right it, i didn't choose it just happened right and thankfully it did that my parents did that mm. but um the day after i got my results i got a message through 23 and me and it was a, a half sister who said happy new year it was January wow. 2nd. <laughs> Happy New Year. You're probably wondering what's going on. Right. So wow. she explained uh, in a lot more detail about the Ferris Institute and the process and that there were at that time six of us. We gathered the facts we knew. All right. Mm -hmm. it, it took place in Philadelphia. All of our mothers were told that the donor was um, a, a student at University of Pennsylvania Medical Center, that there mm -hmm. were probably doctors. Mm -hmm. Going there to, to find our bio dad, actually, what happened, one of uh, my half-sibling brothers went to Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, there was dad. Our bio dad had submitted his DNA there years before and was literally really? waiting for us. We crafted him a letter, and it simply said thank you. Thank you for no, what you've really? done for us. You created a lot of life, not only ours, but our, you created oh. more grandchildren in yeah. a sense, right? <laughs> and um, we were excited to see the reaction. We said, we don't want anything. We just want to know who you are and want you to know that, 
that we're all good. Right. We didn't get a response. Oh. So we were really disappointed. Aww. We were like, why, why would he have put himself out yeah. there for us and then not respond? So a few weeks passed, and then another email from a half-sibling shows up. The inside was a link to our father's obituary. Oh. So oh. our bio dad, in this time of excitement, you know, he was an older gentleman, and, and he passed away. Okay. So we were obviously disappointed. The okay. lovely part was I, mm. I uh, and a few others went to his funeral. Oh. It was really? quite moving. Yeah, wow. and I got wow. to glam a little bit of who he was from his the children, people his, you know, close family who spoke about him. Mm. And I situated myself next to these panels of pictures, and it was the first time I really saw him. And mm. I took all these pictures, and I shared, mm. shared those pictures with mm. my siblings. We left his funeral and just thought that would be that, right? Mm -hmm. A few weeks later, we actually got a phone call from the son that he raised, my half-brother that he raised. And mm. it was, hey, Tim, hi. <laughs> hey, bro. It's your brother. It's your brother. Hey, bro, how's it going? <laughs> so I go, well, how did you find us? And he goes, I found the letter. Mm. So it mm. was just great. We thought that we had hit a, you know, a brick wall and we mm. weren't going to get any more information. And luckily, the family had found that letter and, and read it and realized what was going on. Wow. So then we got together uh, that next Thanksgiving, the day after, and I think we were up to, uh, we were up to about 15 at that point. Uh -huh. well. And then the next year... We're up 15 to more? About 10 more. And then yeah. most recently, I mean, just literally in the last month, we've welcomed two other siblings into our family. And you brought all your family? It was just, really? the, just the kids. Like, did you bring all your kids? We brought and, our kids. Oh my God. So, yeah. how many people? Like, That's 100, like 100 people. people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Did you rent a hall? No. Oh wow. my God. A family home in, in, Phila, in the Philly area. So, wow. one of the things that is really striking me about this conversation here is that you did not know your biological father, but all of a sudden you feel connected mm. to him. Like, and this mm. is a person that yeah. you've never spoken to, you've yep. not had any interaction. You just know on paper that he is your father, yeah. but you really feel connected. Absolutely, very grateful mm. for what he did. Yeah. Very grateful for what my parents did. My mom's my hero, Aww. you know, for going through what she did. All right, we have one of Julia and Tim's half siblings with us here live via Skype all the way from California. Please welcome Kim to the show. All right. <laughs> this family's getting bigger and bigger. All right. Hey, Kim, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Oh, we're just sitting around with your family chatting a little just bit. Just hanging out. Yeah. How did you find out about your father and uh, how did that news change your life? Um, my parents divorced when I was 12, and um, my mom thought that that would be a good time to let us know, and she did. Um, and I was, I was shocked, but I was also really excited. It was interesting to me to think about that there was another um, person in my life who I didn't know that had a big impact on who I was. And I feel that way about Tim and, and Julia. Um, they're both spectacular human beings intelligent, funny, smart. Um, I wish that we lived closer together and could hang out all the time. Aww, so cool. Well, there's yet another layer mm -hmm. to add to this deep and complex DNA story, and it extends right to the heart of our show. That's right. When we come back, we're going to meet one of our producers who's still coming to grips with this shocking information his own DNA test revealed. So don't go away. Next, this twisted tale of family secrets comes right to the producer of our own show. My father was not my father. Hi. All right. All right, we're here with Julia and Tim in our studio and Kim in California via Skype. Now, all three of whom found out from a DNA test that they were each other's half siblings. Well, they now have over 30 siblings mm -hmm. and may still be counting. <laughs> but now this twisted DNA story leads right into the heart of the Doctor and the Diva family. Mm -hmm. Joining us now to share his side of the story is one of the brothers Julia grew up with mm -hmm. and he just happens to be the executive producer of our show. That's right. Rich, come All on right. out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So surprising. Such a shock. I mean, oh. all right, so Rich, it's just emotionally, was it pain, shock? 
I mean, what hit you? I, gotta, I have to be honest, and sort of embarrassing, it was excitement. Yeah. If excitement? I'm being totally yeah. honest, it okay. was excitement. Just for wow. that reason, a very sort of egotistical. Okay. So it was excitement. But nothing there was tragic. It wasn't like, you right. know, somebody passed away, God forbid. Right. So it was just sort of like, oh, wow, this is cool. I've heard about these things. I'm a part of something. And they're always like, I, can't, I, I get to go, go to parties and, you know, sort of oh get attention. Gosh. You know, it was. It, that Boy, was very... are you a part of something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you and your bank. brother decide to take a DNA test. We did. Okay. Yeah. And what happened? Yeah. Okay, so we took the DNA test, and well, I knew what was hanging. There were a couple things hanging in the balance. What were they? Were we going to have half siblings, like my sister had, like mm -hmm. this sort of new family that mm -hmm. that was number one? What was my relationship with my sister? We could have had the same donor, and therefore we would be full siblings. Mm -hmm. okay. Was that, what was my relationship with my brother? I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps now. Right. And and was my father, my life father, was he my father? Hmm. Now that one was that's so very much. loaded that right. one. that's a big one cuz you were close <clears throat> with your dad extremely close he it, it, I wish he were here as she said he passed away in 89 he was a larger than life figure he was a big man he's a very smart man right. he was very involved in our lives he was a kind man he could be a tough man but whatever he was he was there like you didn't live in his family without right. feeling his presence sure. so I admired him again choked up <clears throat> I looked up to him <sighs> Sorry. I have control of editing. I can, I can edit this out <laughs> if I need to. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I wanted him to be my father. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you wanted to believe you that wanted he was. That. I wanted that. Yeah. So what did you learn from the results? Well, I learned that my sister was my half-sister. Okay. I didn't like that. No. no. I did learn that my brother was my full brother. Okay. okay. <clears throat> my father was not my father. That's got to be tough, Rich. I mean, I Very can't hard. imagine you grow up in this <clears throat> in this family and you love your dad and this is what you know. And then all of a sudden, it is. now none of this is true. Mm -hmm. None of it's true. Yeah. Right? And, you know, people say, but you still have your life experience with him. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. whatever happened, happened, Absolutely. and that's true. Right. And he taught me so much and he made such an impression on me. But right. Now I look back on, all, we end, like I said, my father, it was, you know, he, he, he could be tough. So there's a lot of tough moments. When you think right. about life with my dad, yeah. it could be tough. Mm -hmm. So now I look back at those moments, I'm like, what was he thinking? Like yeah. when he scolded me for this, would he have said, if he were my blood, he'd mm -hmm. have done better? I mean, I'll, I, it just puts a different lens. Mm -hmm. And the thing wow. is, he's dead, and I can't do anything about mm -hmm. it. So I've had those same thoughts, like when he was mad at us, mm -hmm. or even proud of us, would he, would he think to himself, well, right. they're not really my kid. Right. And mm -hmm. I honestly don't think that that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. And I, I hope to believe that someday. I don't want that distance. Yeah. I don't want it, but it's just there. It's there. I don't sure. want the, she, I heard what she said earlier, and I, and I agree that she sort of, now all of a sudden, her, her two brothers moved over here. Well, luckily she had this group that came in. But now, I can't speak for my brother, but I've had m my relatives move over here, and I got nothing here. Right. Mm -hmm. So what did you find out about your health, and how did this DNA result <laughs> well, affect your health? It's more what I didn't find out, and that's, that's sort of like the big cautionary tale here for me. So number one, mm -hmm. my father had a heart attack. His family had heart issues, right? So ever since he passed away, I did a number of preventative measures uh, to, to prevent any sort of heart disease. I took pills. I did tests. Oh, I did stress tests. Right. I did MRIs. Mm -hmm. I did three monthly checkups. Right. Years and years and years and years and years. Lo and behold, he ain't my dad. The other thing, though, is that I've got a very close... I tear up again to say heads up mm -hmm. is that I've got a very, very close family member who has an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. She's going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I had known this information sooner, might I have been able to do some investigation mm -hmm. to have I found have a family member that had this, been aware of it before mm -hmm. it had, had onset. So each of you are experiencing this very differently, right? Mm -hmm. Through a different lens, through a different filter. But how is it impacting your identity? We grew up very Jewish, okay? And we had a very strong Jewish identity, okay? Um, I like all cultures, all religions. I like it all. But I'm Jewish. I grew up Jewish. I like my Jewish identity, mm -hmm. okay? Um, when I got the results back, the same as what she did, when you look at the pie chart, I'm, I'm, I'm half white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. <laughs> You can go to the church with me. It's all right. I, I might just. It's all right. I'm a <laughs> Scottish British. But again, that's another thing now. That, and again, people can say, but you grew up for years and years and years and years mm -hmm. Jewish and nothing can change that. But the truth of the matter is, I can tell you what I'm feeling aside is I feel a little more distant from my Jewish heritage too. Mm -hmm. So right. all this did was distance things from me. It just it didn't dist bring I'm you sorry to say, but it distanced things, things, things from me. It distanced you from everything that you know yes. and right. everything that and you thought was true. And I don't know where true. to go with it. Right. I don't know where to go with it. I get that. But I've always thought about I always go back to my parents and what they were going through and your parents did the same thing right yeah. your, your mom wanted to create life so thank god that 
they figure out a way to do it. This I, is true. I am totally thankful of the man who gave me life. Mm -hmm. Never met him. And I'm so thankful for the man who made me who I am as a but person. But didn't both I, of those know. guys give you life? Yeah. If you really yeah, think about true. it, you know? Yeah, that's like, a good point. Yeah. Your dad, mm -hmm. you know, your dad said, you just said it was dad's idea to do mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. he said, I want this, and that's a beautiful thing that in is. and of itself. I never but here's two that. men who never met each other, and look at right. all, I mean, all the fathers that, you know, allowed this and wanted this with their wives. What a beautiful gift that's a great it is way to, to everybody. It. I never yeah. thought of that. Right. I, yeah. like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. I love this girl right here. Yeah. Um, I know, it, I don't like being more distant from you. I don't yeah. like it, but she's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful person, and you are the greatest sister that anybody could have, and now you've got some of her, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, Tim, Julia, and, and Kim, who's in California, you guys have gone through so much. And I think, I mean, I appreciate you sharing it. I, I'm sure this will help everybody watching this show. Yeah. So, I mean, really, it's an amazing story. It's and thanks powerful. for sharing it with us. It's Thank incredible. You. Yeah. Thank you. All right. There's more Dr. Nadeva coming up right after this.